All right, so I'm gonna cut out the inside of the drum and then drill some holes in the bottom and get this thing burning. Yeah, and you can look at um, that picture I sent you. I don't think it's rocket science, you know? It's, we're just gonna build a big tube and we're gonna light a fire in it, so. Okay. Yeah, I don't think the caveman could have done it if it was rocket science. Yeah, and as far as I can tell, cooking meat this way is uh, oldest man. I'll get this going and see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. My buddy Pat came to me with the idea of converting a 55 gallon drum into a meat smoker. I thought it sounded like a fun project, but I told him I had no idea how to smoke meat. I can barely follow the directions on the back of a hamburger helper box. He said he would worry about the smoking if I handled the welding. It seemed like a good deal to me. I grabbed an old oil drum we had sitting around on the farm and cut the top out of it so I could get a little fire going inside. Pat said 40 weight engine oil wouldn't be the best marinade for the brisket we planned on smoking first, so we needed to get it good and hot to cook off all the residue left in the drum. If it were up to me, I would have found a stick, threw a couple hot dogs on it, and roasted them right over the fire here. Job done. Belly full. But Pat has the book smart skills, and I knew I could count on him to do a lot of research on what we needed to build a functioning smoker. And I kind of figured the brisket might be a little more special and a little more tasty than my ballpark footlongs. And it's a good excuse to hang out with my buddy. We hauled the barrel up to the farm shop, and after a quick tutorial on the plasma cutter, Pat got to work trimming out the opening in the barrel. So the basic idea of a smoker, coming from a guy that is still working on getting top ramen cooked right, is that there's a small fire at the bottom that makes the smoke, which carries up through the smoker to the top rack where the meat is. It's not the direct heat from the fire that cooks the meat. In fact, it's best to have a side box for the fire that can then have the smoke carried into the drum up through the meat. Oh, that sounded good. I think I missed though. No, you got it. Look at that. But we figured for our first smoker, a small fire at the bottom will be fine. I found some scraps on the metal rack that we could use to build a basket to hold the coal and the wood that'll make the smoke. To make sure the small fire could breathe and get enough airflow up through it, we used some small bolts as legs for the basket. That looks like something. That looks like something. And to control the size and heat of the fire, we needed to weld a valve at the bottom of the barrel over the air in there. Put your nipple in that hole right there. <laughs> so this is the big one. We welded one three quarter inch nipple on that the valve will go on. And then a couple more half inch nipples on the back side, just in case that wasn't enough airflow. Just planning on capping them for now. Make it another no, that's perfect. that's perfect, that's perfect, that's perfect. It's only job is to be a, a tube. Pat's a big shot lawyer now, and doing really well for himself. But I think he still think enjoys we'll an excuse to come out to the farm and get his hands dirty every now and then. Especially if the excuse involves smoking meat and drinking beer. We use some long bolts up top to hold the meat rack. And then the last thing we needed to do was to build a lid for the top. It really needed to be airtight because you want all the air coming in through the valve at the bottom that you're in control of. Using a scrap piece of metal, we traced around the opening of the barrel and then offset it about an inch to give us a little bit of room to work with and cut it out with the plasma. I bent a one inch strip of metal around the lid, tacking it as I went to give the lid a lip. The lid needs a couple of vents on top to help direct the airflow up through the center of the smoker. 
has to I kind of like that dual. Yeah. Almost me exhaust too. like out of a yeah. truck or something. After a heated debate on the best location for the vents. Oh, so much better. Pat cut out the shapes with the plasma Change cutter. First. The last thing we decided to do on the lid was to put a handle on it. We grabbed a stick of rebar and bent it around into the shape of a handle. My mom's going to be so happy we use rebar. Very artistic rebar. It wasn't hot, but I appreciate it. Turning your sword. <laughs> Did we just make a smoker? You did. No. We did that. We made a smoker. Alright, don't patronize me, but I was here. This wouldn't have been made if you weren't here. Well, that's true. That much I can say. There's something really satisfying about starting and finishing a project all in one night and kind of winging things along the way. Most of my projects are pretty long and drawn out. And to do something different was a lot of fun. We lit one more fire in it that night just to make sure all that 40 weight marinade had burned off. The next morning we wiped everything down with acetone and then gave it a couple coats of high heat paint. That's like silver. <laughs> yeah, that's the gray one. That's the gray. Really wasn't sure if the paint was going to stay on there very well, especially after subjecting it to a 12 hour smoking session. But we wanted to at least start with it looking nice and be proud of our project. We thought it might inspire a little bit of confidence to the guests we invited to come eat Beautiful. the meat that came out of this thing. So if it didn't look like just a rusty old farm you barrel. probably do one brisket because a brisket's like. Big. Oh. Raw, I think they're like 10 to 15 pounds. How are we going to do this? A few weeks later was Patrick's birthday, and we thought that was the prime opportunity to try this thing out. Getting a little help from his wife, MB, we got the smoker set up and a small fire going. This was the night before, and Pat claimed he was ready to stay up all night watching this meat. We'll go basically like this to tell me what the temperature turn it. Put that yeah. It is just shooting up. Pat stuck a digital thermometer through a potato and set it on the top rack. Did it stop climbing? Yeah. The potato, I guess, just keeps the thermometer off the cooking surface and gives a more accurate temperature reading. So what he does is he... Now it was Pat's turn to take over. Point facing down. I was definitely clueless on how the heck we were going to do this. That's the biggest piece of meat I've ever seen. That's most of the cow, I think. <laughs> Again, coming from a guy that is excited when he doesn't burn toast, I think the general idea of this VW bug-sized piece of meat was to leave an even layer of fat on the bottom, about half an inch thick. And on the top, you want to cut most of it away. Pat was kind of figuring out as he went along as well, using a couple of YouTube videos as guidance. The layer of fat on the bottom sort of acts as a heat shield, cooking the brisket evenly. Like this? Yep. No, not like that. Do it from a little higher up. I was very surprised Drake wasn't more interested in this giant piece of meat we had on the kitchen counter. I guess it was past his bedtime though. With the fat trimmed and the meat seasoned, it was time for it to go in the smoker. Plus it's real fucking smoky. 266? That's not bad. Yeah, it's close. The vent on the bottom to control the temperature worked well, really well. A lot of that is due to the fact that the meat was... With the quarter turn of the valve, you could control the temperature in 5 or 10 degree increments pretty easily. 20 minutes, I'll see we're 
Once the meet was smoking away, it was an evening of N64, as Pat and I pretended we were back in high school, which is what we usually do when we hang out. The only difference is now I have trouble making it past 11 p.m. before I start getting sleepy. Pat claims he checked the smoker every 30 minutes through the whole night, which I kind of doubt just a little. But whatever he did, sure worked. This brisket looked amazing. That afternoon, all our steam guests showed up in the barn, and Pat got to work cutting up the brisket. Just as Pat had predicted, the outermost thin piece on the brisket was a little dry, but as soon as he cut this away, it was the most moist and tender meat I've ever had. And it had so much flavor. That's where the two came together. Sure. It makes it hard to cut when it's jiggling like that. Yeah, it does. This biggest piece of meat that I'd ever seen did not last very long that day. I wonder if we can fit two briskets on the smoker. Josie, I'm zoomed way in on you. Yeah, you're making me really nervous. <laughs> I think my dad and I both like picking on my sister because she and her husband went for a walk. What's that over there? What's over there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some kidding! Past the big gun sprinkler, and my dad saw this and he took off at a dead sprint for the pump out in the field, hoping to turn it on just as they were walking by. <laughs> they had walked a little bit past it, but my mom and sister told her there's a kitten back there, which always works on JLC, and she actually started walking back towards it, looking for this kitten. We're always really busy on the farm here this time of year, and days like this are very rare, which I think makes us appreciate it even more when we do get to do it. It was so nice out that I couldn't resist taking the drone up for a flight. I also let Pat fly the drone, which was a great idea. <laughs> oh man. I told him he's lucky, he's my best friend. Yeah, such a great day though. One of my favorite days of the summer. And to make it even better, the next morning was the eclipse. Should I smile? The path of totality basically went right over my house. And all summer we were told that there's gonna be Armageddon around here during the eclipse because of all the millions of people that were supposedly coming to watch the eclipse here. But luckily, that was overplayed a little bit in the news, and it wasn't too bad. Just a little more traffic out here in the country than we usually get. Man, the eclipse was spectacular. It was a lot more than I was expecting, if I'm being honest. <laughs> I've heard people say that every person needs to see a total solar eclipse at least once in their life, and Having now seen one, I completely agree. For me to get to sit in my front yard and watch it made it even that much more special. And being able to sit next to my friends and family made it into a moment that I'll never forget.